So let's talk a little bit about how we all came into being. What we see right over here, this is a picture of a sperm cell, of a sperm cell fusing with an egg cell. So that's a sperm cell, and this is an egg cell, or we could call this an ovum. An ovum. And even this scene depicted right over here, this is the end of an epic competition. Because this sperm cell is one of two to three hundred million that is vying for this ovum. So there's two to three hundred million of these characters, and they're all they're all vying for this ovum. And the one that you see that's about to fuse for it, this is the winner of this incredibly, this is remember, two to three hundred. 200 million to 300 million sperm are trying to get here. So this is, a, this is a major victory. And to some degree, we should all feel pretty good about ourselves because we are all the byproduct of that one in 200 to 300 million sperm cells that won this race getting to our mother's ovum. So the sperm cell came from our father, the egg cell this is all happening this is all happening inside of our mothers the egg cell is from our mother now once this happens let's talk a little bit about the terminology so once these two fuse we call this pro or the process of them fusing we call that fertilization fertilize fertilize fertilization fertilization and it produces a cell that then differentiates into all of the cells of our body. So you can imagine this is an important process. So let's make sure that we understand the different terminology, the different words for the different things that are acting in this process. So the, each, of the, these, each of these sex cells, I guess we could say, the sperm cell and the ovum, these are each called gametes. So this right over here is a gamete is a gamete, and the ovum is a gamete. The egg cell is also a gamete. And as we'll see, each gamete has half the number of chromosomes as, a, as your body cells, or most of your, 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 or the somatic cells in your body. So outside of your sex cells that might be in your, in your, ov in your ovaries, or your testes, depending on whether you're male or female, these have half the number. So let's let's dig a little bit deeper into what I mean there. So I'm gonna, so let's just do a blow up of of this sperm, of the sperm cell right over here. So blow up of the sperm cell. And I'm not gonna draw it to scale. You see the sperm cell is much smaller than the egg cell, but just to give a sense. So let me draw the nucleus of of this sperm cell, so just like that. If we're talking about a human being, and I'm assuming you're a human being, so that might be of interest to you, this will have 23 chromosomes from your father. So let's do them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And for the 23rd one, that's going to be your sex determining chromosome. So if your father contributes an X, you are going to be female. If your father contributes a Y, you are going to be male. So this is, this is, these are the chromosomes in the male gamete, or I guess I say the gamete that your father's contributing, the sperm. So this is a gamete right over here. And then that's going to fuse with the egg, the ovum that your mother is contributing. And once again, I'm not drawing that to scale. So this is the this is the egg. And let me draw its nucleus. So that's its nucleus. Once again, none of this is drawn to scale. And your mother is also going to contribute 23 chromosomes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And then she will contribute an X chromosome for the, uh, the sex determining. So your sex determining chromosomes are going to be XY. You're going to be male. If this was XX, you are going to be female. So this is also a gamete here. So a gamete is the general term for either a sperm or an egg. Now once these two things are fused, so once they are fused, what do we have? Once they're fused, then we're going to have a, you could say a fertilized egg, but we're going to call that a zygote. So let me draw that. I'll do this in a new color. 
and I'm running out of space and I want this all to fit on the same piece, all on the same screen, so I'll draw it not quite at scale. And so let me draw the nucleus of this zygote. I'm going to make the nucleus fairly large so that we can focus on the chromosomes in it. Once again, none of this is drawn to scale. So you're going to have the 23 chromosomes from your father. So let me do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three. And then the 23 chromosomes from your mother. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three. So you got that X chromosome from your mother. And as you might have noticed, I've drawn them in pairs. So you now have a total, let me, let me make it clear. You have 23 chromosomes here. 23 chromosomes. Chromosomes in the sperm. You have 23 chromosomes. 23 chromosomes in the egg. And now you have 46 chromosomes in the fertilized egg. 46 chromosomes. And now that we have a full contingent of chromosomes, and then this cell can now keep replicating, keep splitting and differentiating into all of what makes you, you, we call this right over here, we call this a zygote. Zygote. So one way to think about it, the gametes are the sex cells that have half the number of chromosomes, and the zygote is the cell that's now ready to differentiate into an actual organism that has double the number, or that has, that has a full contingency of chromosomes, that has 46 chromosomes. And you see that I made them in pairs. And these pairs, we call these homologous pairs. And in each of these pairs, this is a pair of homologous chromosomes. Pair of homologous, homologous chromosomes. Chromosomes. So what does, what does that mean? Well, that means that in general, these two chromosomes, you've got one from your father, one from your mother, they code for the same things. They code for the same proteins. But they are different variants of how they code for those, pro those, those proteins, those traits that you have. So uh, you know, gross oversimplification is, let's say that there was a gene, let's say that there is a, a gene on that one from your father that helps code for hair color, well, there would be a similar, there'd be another variant of that gene on the chromosome from your mother that helps code for hair color as well. So these are homologous chromosomes. The, the, these two chromosomes code, for, in general, for the same things. And so the zygote now has, you could say it has 46 chromosomes, or you could say it has 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. And this is, once again, this is the case for human beings. If we're talking about some other species, instead of 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes, or 46 chromosomes in total, you might be talking about 10 pairs of homologous chromosomes, with, or tw and with 20 chromosomes in general. Now, to, to help biologists to help clarify what, what, when they're talking about the number of chromosomes for a given species, they introduce two words, haploid and diploid. And haploid, haploid is referring to when you have half the full contingency of chromosomes. So for human beings, the haploid number is 23. So this is the haploid, haploid number, haploid number haploid number, it is 23. For another species, it would be something else. And haploid is based on the prefix eight, hapl, or that's, that's the prefix for single. So you have kind of a single member, I guess you could think of it, of each of the pairs. And now you have, you have both of each pair. You have both chromosomes or, or in each pair. Or you have the full contingency. And this 46 chromosomes, this is called the diploid number. The diploid number for humans. Diploid. The diploid number right over here. And when people talk in general, and we will speak in general when we start talking about mitosis and meiosis, for a given species, they'll refer to the haploid number. 
they will refer to the haploid number as n, n chromosomes, and they'll refer to the diploid number as just twice that, as 2n chromosomes. So hopefully this gets you familiar with some of the vocabulary around fertilization and haploid and diploid and zygotes and gametes, and also makes you feel a little bit better about yourself that just to exist, you, at least I guess half of your chromosomes, had to win an incredibly, an incredibly competitive race.